2012 and 2010 uh, nominee for the U.S. House of Representatives against Betty McCollum in the 4th Congressional District in Minnesota. And today I want to show you inside the world of election law and who's really running the show when the Democratic Party runs in the 4th District of Minnesota and probably in most of the other districts which they control in the country. I have here a response from Betty McCollum uh, through a lawyer to the Minnesota Supreme Court in an elections contest which I've filed and which uh, has been ferociously blocked by Democratic officials in the state of Minnesota. I want to read uh, how they defend kind of a quota system, a agenda quota system that they are knowingly openly running in the state of Minnesota and especially hits hard in the 4th and 5th congressional districts that's in St. Paul and Minneapolis, the metro area of Minnesota where they maintain a safe uh, district. And I also want to show you how they can suppress uh, free speech and political expression in order to get their people in Washington where, as we've seen uh, in many cases, certainly in this case of Betty McCollum, she sits there and really does nothing about the problems of the country. So I'm going to read from this response of hers to the Minnesota Supreme Court. By order of this court dated December 26, 2012, Gildea Chief Justice, the named respondents herein were authorized to serve a written response to the instant petition, that's my petition, uh, along with supporting materials no later than January 14, 2013, which response is to be limited to the question of dismissing the petition without trial based upon the grounds of latches, mootness, and or failure of the petition to state a claim upon which relief can be granted. The following response of Congresswoman Betty McCollum is hereby served and filed. Okay, and here's part two. That the petition should be dismissed, this is Betty McCollum, uh, as to Congresswoman McCollum without trial because it is moot. The instant petition was not filed with this court until December 21st, 2012, some 25 days after the completion of the canvas, November 27, 2012. That's when the uh, State Canvassing Board certified the results. For the Office of uh, representative in Congress for the 4th Congressional District in some 46 days after the November 6th general election for that office. An election at which respondent received 62.27% uh, of the votes uh, passed as respondent McCombs received uh, over 62%. On January 2nd, 2013, Representative McCollum was sworn in as Congresswoman from Minnesota's 4th Congressional District, which swearing in totally moots this petition as to her. Therefore, it should be dismissed. The case is moot if an event occurs, quote, that makes a decision on the merits unnecessary or an award of relief impossible, unquote called Housing and Redevelopment Authority, XREL City of Richfield and Walser Auto Sales Incorporated. See also in Ray Schmidt. The basis of that rule is that a court should hear only a live controversy and not issue an advisory opinion. And this draws on a Minnesota appellate court case from 2002, Cheney versus Minneapolis Community Development Agency, 641 Northwest 2nd, 328 and also uh, Farm Bureau Mutual Insurance Company versus Schwann uh, from the Minnesota Court of Appeals 2004. The doctrine of mootness is a doctrine of standing set in a time frame. It describes the requisite personal interest that must exist at the commencement of the litigation, which is standing, and that must continue through its existence. And that's uh, from a United States Supreme Court case from 2000, Friends of the Earth Incorporated versus Laidlaw Environmental Services Incorporated, and also see in Ray Inspection of Minnesota Auto Specialties, a Minnesota Supreme Court case from 1984. Now, if pending an appeal, 
an event occurs which will make a decision on the merits unnecessary or an award of relief impossible, the appeal will be dismissed. Since the United States House of Representatives is the sole judge of the elections and qualifications of its members, once it has seated a member, as it has in the case of Congresswoman McCollum, there is no relief that this court can grant petitioner retroactively. United States Constitution Article 1, uh, Section 5. Simply put, it's not constitutionally possible for this court to unseat a duly elected and sworn in member of the United States House of Representatives. It would be unseemly and of no legal consequence to hold a trial in which the requested relief cannot be granted. Furthermore, Minnesota courts do not grant advisory opinions. And this is from Size versus Citizens Pure Ice Company. That's a, uh, a Minnesota Supreme Court case from 1940. Mr. Weinblatt and Representative McCollum are focusing entirely on the contest to remove her. And yet they, they leave out two things. First of all, that case, that contest, which is not this petition, but it is incorporated into this petition, because it was blocked uh, by these operatives uh, in the Ramsey County District Court. And these are operatives that want to block election contests. I don't know if they're Democrats. I don't know if Elena Osby, the judge, or Mary Jurek, the deputy uh, court administrator, are Democrats. However, they blocked the uh, contest. That was filed seven days after the certification of the results. So there was no latches there. Now this one is a petition which looks at the conduct of the election officials in the case. That does not have to be filed within seven days because that's under a different statute entirely. And that one just looks at how did these uh, public officials, these public officials with directly election related duties, how did they conduct themselves and do they need to be corrected and overruled? And I would say, yes, they do. Now, the election contest is not moot uh, for uh, one very clear reason. Now, the latches uh, clearly does not apply because this is governed by a statute of limitations. And that gave seven days after the certification. It could not have been filed prior to that. But as to the mootness, the fact that she was seated is not of consequence because as even Weinblatt and McCollum admit, the state of Minnesota can do nothing to unseat uh, a member of the House of Representatives even before they're seated. All that we can do under 209.21 is to gather information and forward it to the House of Representatives. And so it doesn't matter when that happens, the House of Representatives should receive that information. Now if somebody has blocked the contest so that they receive it late, that does not make the matter move because there's no more relief that could be ordered one way or the other. If the House of Representatives decide that even a seated member should be removed because of something that happened in the way they got elected and the blocking of the contest, that's open to them. There's a number of other actions that they could take as well. For instance, they could just say, in all future cases, we don't want any quotas of gender, uh, either in Minnesota or any other state in the union, being used to determine who's going to endorse candidates for the Democratic Party, for the Republican Party. We won't have a requirement in any state that only white men can attend the uh, state convention to endorse a Republican candidate. That would be just as repugnant to the Constitution as is this, which says in Minnesota, only a majority of women may make the endorsement decision. Well, what happened after that? Not only did McCollum continue to sail through, but immediately after this went into effect, Amy Klobuchar became the first woman senator from Minnesota. And what's going to happen is, any time that an incumbency is changed in any district in Minnesota, and you have to have a majority of women endorsing from that region, uh, this, from that congressional district, you're going to have a very high likelihood that a woman is going to be appointed or endorsed.
and then sail through the general election. Now imagine if this spread to every state in the United States. 90% of the members of Congress would be women. Now to me, that would be a disaster. And it's unconstitutional. So this case is not moved. These issues live on. McCollum says she wants to fight for voting rights, but her party setting quotas for blacks and whites. She says she's representing all of Minnesota, but she really represents a Democrat quota. Up here we've always talked about integration, but today we're spreading quotas all across the nation. So instead of an intelligent conversation, the Democrats use cynical manipulation. Make it count. Let the voters govern. Our democratic system makes you the sovereign. Any kind of gender or racial steering is just another form of social engineering. We need a social system that's just and fair. A quota system just gives you a musical chair. The Democratic Party doesn't want your idea. They just want you to sit there for the world to see you. And when the party's over and they go back to work, you get to see Keith Ellison go totally berserk. He's calling his opponent a low-life scumbag. You know that's just a lot of political humbug. Make it count. Let the voters govern. In our democratic system, you know you're the sovereign. To close the unemployment and learning gap, you don't just have performers to sing and rap. You've got to get employers to make some jobs. Not smiling politicians and their adoring mobs. Does anyone even know where jobs could really come from? Well, it's not from Keith Ellison or Betty McCollum. I heard a Republican talking Enterprise Zone. Now, it's not a bad idea, and he's not alone. An Enterprise Zone might make things happen. Let everyone join in and don't leave anyone napping. Make it count. Let the voters govern. A democratic system makes you the sovereign. I'm not a Republican, not a Democrat. Don't have a safe seat, not immune from defeat. I'm running for my office and I'm not standing pat. My congressional district stuck on Democrat. I want more economic development. I'm running for the House as an independent.